Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. I am currently listening to Drunkish by Stephanie Wilder-Taylor. I really like Stephanie. And this is a book about leaving alcohol. It's called A A Memoir of Loving and Leaving Alcohol. And I really dig her take on it. She's a funny person, and I love having her voice actually in my ear reading it to me. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Sound the gifting panic alarm. You need to get an amazing gift. Wait, no, the perfect gift. And it needs to say, I'm a thoughtful person. And I appreciate you. And I know exactly what you like. All at the same time. Relax. Now you can use gift mode on Etsy. Gift Mode on Etsy is here to take the stress out of gifting, so you can find the perfect item for anyone and any occasion. It's easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for all the people in your life, like the pickleballer, the jazz fan, the zen seeker, the artist, or the pasta lover. From 90s nostalgia and mixology to reality TV and gaming, there's something for everyone on Etsy. A gifting moment is always around the corner, whether it's a birthday, an anniversary, a holiday, or even just a day to say thank you. Gift Mode on Etsy has you covered. Need to find the perfect gift? Don't panic. Gift easy with Gift Mode on Etsy. From Wondery and Audible comes Class of 88, a new podcast hosted by Will Smith. Before 1988, a lot of people didn't take hip-hop seriously. But hip-hop today touches everything from film to fashion to sports. So what changed? Follow Class of 88 wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is part two of a two-part recap. If you're wondering where part one was, well, go check in the feed and be sure to subscribe. But enough of that. Let's get right back into the episode. So he's like, yeah, well, I was just like, I'm, you know what? I'm sorry I didn't give you more grace for what you were going through last year. I just was, I guess I wasn't able to give you grace because I was going through things last year. For instance, I don't know if you know, but Rand left me or I left Rand because he cheated on me. And Schwartz was like, yeah, I'm sorry in the manner that I retaliated. I mean, coming for your lips. I mean, you're one of the most beautiful people I ever laid eyes on in my life. I mean, that's just, I mean, platonically, of course, but coming for your lips. I mean, that's just like low-hanging fruit. There's so many other things I could have come for. Your terrible personality, um, your gold-digging ways, just so many things. God, I really messed that one up. I just see you in ocean, and I remember why I fell in love with you. Just as friends, of course, you know. I just wish you could do this with Tom, you know, like we're talking now, because, you know, his family. Okay, you're doing exactly what she was yelling at you about last night. Okay, just let the guy fucking sink or swim on his own, you know, but Mm -hmm. she's there for it because she's had the talk. So now she's ready. She's like, I know. I know. I know. He's like, I can't abandon that man. And I won't. I won't do it. So let's go back to intimacy. Intimacy. Get intimacy. (laughs) So Billy and Sandoval are in robes sitting around. He's like, I feel great. Billy's like, yeah, well, you deserve it. Yeah, well, there's like something that I'm like not. That's something I've not really said to myself in a while. I deserve it. Thank you. (laughs) Billy's like, yeah, no, just just know that you are worthy and you deserve bliss. By the way, are you thinking of dating? Are you interested in anyone? Like, okay, of all the people in this room right now, who would you want to date the most? It's only me. I'm not doing that. I do miss Raquel, though. We haven't talked in three weeks, dude. Last time I talked to Raquel, I didn't think it would be the last time I spoke with her. I mean, in that conversation, she did tell me she's extending again into the mental health place. And I told her, okay, I love her, and we'll talk later. But now, won't even call me back, bro. 
Dude, like what we had was love. And, like that's why I was like so addicted to it. It's like Robert Palmer says, and I'm addicted to love. I'm gonna put that in that show. That's why I like I couldn't see anything else. And it's like not like we were just like hanging out and having sex. Like the hangout was the best part. Like when we would like talk about things and like I told her what a broomstick was and I introduced her to like tinfoil and then I would like roll up the tinfoil and like we'd Bat it around a little bit. Like, it was so fun. I explained to her how star machines were really not just stars. They actually came from electricity. Like, dude, I unplugged the star machine and plugged it back in. I think a light bulb went out. No one pun intended, bro. You, <laughs> you should have seen her eyes the first time she ever saw yogurt. It was, like, amazing and magical. <sighs> so many feelings in my head. There's, like, pain. There's anger. It's like pomade. Well, it's on top of my head. But still, <laughs> it's thick. It's greasy. But it's also moisturizing, you know? And then there's bleakness. Because I lost all of my friends, you know? They were just like, God, it's hard being friends with someone with such healthy hair, bro. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Like, I'm just hoping that we can give, like, whatever this is a shot. Like, pretty much, I'm saving myself for Raquel. And definitely not banging other girls on the side right now. Right, right. And he's like, I just feel like I want to be happy, but I'm not allowed, bro. And Billy's like, you are. You're worthy. You're worthy. Butterball. <laughs> Vegan turkeys. <laughs> like, the Lily's really trying to make a go for it. <laughs> you know, she's like, you know, I just feel like the world is hating on you so much, and I'm tired of it. I wish people would know how much you are hurting you, Tom Sandoval, the real victim in this, because there were times where I thought we could have lost you. Yeah, I got close a couple of times. You know, when you get on freedom of mind, I had to, like, really snap myself out of it. So, yeah, that's when he says he felt all these emotions, and he's like, I just want to be happy again. I don't feel like I'm allowed. You're worthy. You're worthy. All right, well, thanks for coming to intimacy. Your time is up. Get out of me, see. <laughs> Back. And James is dancing <laughs> around with party. butter at his airport lobby house and um, squirting it onto the f- food. He's like, I'm butter, baby. I'm butter. <laughs> no salt, babe. I'm butter, baby. So then Ariana's like, oh, so Sheena, how was your conversation with, Sand- about, with, with Sandoval, with Lisa or whatever? She's, oh, yeah. Oh, no, Sandoval. She did say Sandoval. Um, like, yeah, we talked about the podcast he was, like, pissed off about. And, like, here's where, like, I'm, like, really struggling. Um, we went over to Lisa today, and, like, all three of us were, like, in tears. Um, and Donut, too, would have been in tears, but I don't think he spoke English. So she was in tears because she said she was, like, has, like, a, there's, like, a lot of similarities with her brother before he passed away. And, like, she's, like, very concerned. Um, Tom and her brother are very different people, though. Like, I'm sorry, but no. Because, like, he's still not going to take responsibility for what he did. And so what, what... Uh, you know, what, what am I supposed to be like? Oh, hey, guys, I'm Ariana. Could you please be nice to my ex-boyfriend now? Okay, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> and then she's, Ariana says, I can understand that maybe he's had some thoughts and feelings, but those thoughts and feelings are based on a situation that he created in, in which he didn't give a fuck about anyone else's mental health. So I know I'm a bitch saying this, but it just feels a little bit like, annoying <laughs> right i mean and this is true and she probably took a lot of shit for this i haven't really read comments yet but um we we they they on this show tend to forget like what she was going through while he was doing this her grandma died her dog died he was fucking raquel while she was at her grandma's yeah. funeral like come on not exactly that's crazy. Literally. So then Sheena cries and she's like, oh my God, he was an amazing friend of me. No one understands what I'm going through. <laughs> and she goes, that wasn't real though. Okay. As soon as he's invited to parties again, he's going to be like, oh great. That's all I wanted. You know, don't trust him. It's all manipulation. Which feels true. So then we, uh, now people are at home. It's after it's, it's now it's after that great pool party. Schwartz is on his Peloton dying dying of peloton death right there and then we're at lala's house and she's cleaning some cribs and james comes over so we get the traditional hi jameson i'm upstairs jameson so he goes upstairs oh i've never been up here it's cool well it's so quiet no airplanes overhead strange oh my god your baby's got a bottle same kink as you eh 
She's like, shut up, James. <laughs> so uh, then we see a clip of her back in her bottle days. And she's like, I really like getting a papas and watching some TVs from my mans. <laughs> and Sheena just looking at her like, wow, I'm Sheena. And even I think you're a fucking weirdo. So Lala is saying how she's addicted to Perrier now. And James is, he's like still in his still water phase. And Lala's like, so what made you want to get sober? You don't have to tell me, but you know, we are on TV right now. He goes, oh, well, what do you mean? I don't have to tell you. There's not much to say, Lala. I mean, look, I'll tell you in confidence. Obviously, when the Tom and Raquel stuff happened, a lot of emotions were flowing, right? Like Ala and I were fighting a lot, especially when I'd be getting drunk. And like, what does it start with? Like comments on Instagram, was about Tom and Raquel, was about me showing too much emotion about Tom and Raquel. And then she went and stayed at a friend's house and then took the cats with her. And I came home, there were no cats, there's no Ala, no tarot cards. So yeah, rock um, uh, he's like, but you know what? Last time I quit for the relationship, but this time I quit because Ali said she'd leave me if I didn't quit. So I'm doing it for myself. I'm like, wait a minute. Are you listening to yourself? Because uh, <laughs> you quit for a relationship again. But uh, in his mind, it's not. It's because <laughs> yes. he could have lost his relationship. But it's like the same thing. It's it, I, was, I had that same thought. The difference is that Raquel said, I'm going to leave you. And Ali's like, no. I did leave you. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, I see it now. I understand. Yeah, so I guess Raquel said you have to quit, and Ali didn't say he had to quit. So that's <laughs> what makes like, it different. Up. She just yeah. made it clear that he had to quit. I'm not really sure. But she's like, do you look at this as a forever thing? And he's like, oh, yeah, of course. Otherwise, I couldn't possibly do it. Listen, I know everyone has their different versions of sober, but I think pounding the weed, <laughs> the weed sodas, I, I don't know. You're still like wanting to get blitzed out of your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not really sure how that works. Um, I just feel like don't don't commit to things on like don't you know, commit say to things it, on camera. Forget it, right. write it, regret it. You know, because yeah. look, Cadis Luann, she always has to eat her words because now on girls' trip, she's like, well, well, no, I have drinks on from now and then, certain special opportunities, and now it's a special opportunity because I'm about to fuck five guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every day it's a like special that. occasion. That's my new saying. <laughs> <laughs> Like, wow, she's so spiritual. No, she just wants a drink. All right, all right. Let me tell you what I want into me a guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll take a cold plunge and rose into me. Is that a place? <laughs> Uh, so, so he's like, you know, I don't want to be like an alcoholic 40-year-old. Because that's James's worst nightmare is aging. Which oh, I know. Oh, honey. Got, honey. Got news for you. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. It's age. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. You're about to be old. <laughs> I'm not coming around the mountain. I'm coming on the mountain. Somebody do me. I've so. come around plenty of mountains. Where's my TV show? <laughs> Hi, I'm a cast member on Vanderpump Rules now. Someone fuck the hell out of me, please. So, um... So anyway, he's he's just like uh, Lala. By the saying, way, this is also so Lala too to be like, but James, I'm here for you and your sobrieties because this is her every fucking year with James, and then she but, just turns on James and throws him under the bus for no reason every oh, single yeah. time. You know, in like two weeks, she's going to be talking to the girls, be like, well, you know, James, he became sober because Ali moved out with the cats. Can you believe that, <laughs> Ali and the cats? Yep. <laughs> Um, and Katie's gonna be like, so, miss your cats. <sighs> um, so he's like, yeah, we've come far. You've come. <laughs> <laughs> that will happen. Every miss year. your cats. <laughs> Mr. Banks. So he's like, we've come so far and you've come miles and I'm proud of you in so many ways. Look at you using a straw instead of a bottle, Lola. <laughs> and she's like, thanks, Jets. You know what? I don't think anyone could have a relationship like me and James. We went from being two kids who were who are train wrecks to getting into relationships that ended. In my case, my relationship ended because Rance cheated on me and I had to find out through a video. He went to Nashville's and then I was all alone and there was a national scandal happening and my scandal was off to the side, but my scandal probably should become the front headlines now. What do you think, everyone? You think we can all do this together? Right? So that what I'm just saying is that like me and James are pretty much the same person. Okay, so now we go over to Schwartz's house, and we get the moment I've been waiting for all season. We meet a new side character, Joe. 
hey, I'm Joe. I've been waiting to see Joe because she did this. She does this. Uh, thing where she's joined Instagram. She's like, hi guys, I'm Joe. I've joined Instagram. Please be nice to me, guys. Guys, guys, please be nice to me on Instagram. And then she came out with another video. She goes, wow. You guys are like so mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so mean to me, guys? Guys, stop being so mean to me. Like, you don't like my hair? Okay. Like, I changed my hair. Like, now what? Like, you don't like my eyes? Like, my eyelashes? I changed them. So now what, guys? Stop being mean. Stop it. I Sounds like someone needs a never visit seen to intimacy. anything like that. And I <laughs> will never forget it. It's burned into my brain now. <laughs> Where's my New York Times article, America's Most Hated Woman? <laughs> so uh, she's actually cutting uh, Schwartz's hair. And he's like, so would you prefer a cash? Would you prefer cash for this or a trip to Olive Garden? She's like, Olive Garden? I was like, you know what? I'm okay with her. So Schwartz is like, Joe is a human being. Uh, that uh, Well, she's a human being. Um, she's a, she's a being that's, she's a light in my life. I'll just say that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Joe, you know what's funny? The entire group thinks you're my secret romance slash girlfriend. Uh, isn't that funny? I mean, we did spend a lot of time together last summer. Ah, uh, I feel like we he's trying to do. We still do spend a lot of time together. Hello, I'm cutting your hair for breadsticks. <laughs> yes, I'm one of the breadsticks. <laughs> Um, I feel like he's trying to sell us on Joe a little bit here, right? He's like, I just want to clear things up. Joe was never living with me. Was she staying with me sporadically? Yes. And during that time when she was staying with me, was she alive? Yes. So she was she living with me? Yes. But she wasn't living with me. Oh, not my girlfriend. Never was. We just had this whirlwind romance. Um, but then, you know, now we're just buds. Now. Okay, Joe is the Molly dealer. Can we just all <laughs> agree that Joe is clearly the Molly <laughs> dealer in this relationship? Joe is at the part of her life that when she's in a documentary on... A and E in three years, like I mean, things got so bad. I was giving out haircuts for a love garden. It's rough. <laughs> no one even said Joe. <laughs> You're giving away your life's blood for unlimited breadsticks, Joe. <laughs> Come back to the five and D dime, Joey Joe, Joey Joe. Well, I was like, what was your rock bottom? Giving away free buzz cuts for some Alfredo. I feel for Joe because Joe's just one of those. You want to talk about someone who never profits from any of this shit? It's Joe, okay? And Joe last season, Katie's like, fuck that girl that you're living with, that stupid fucking crackhead. <laughs> no. And then like, so now everyone's like, who's crackhead Joe? Like, just wanting to know. So everybody's like it, make, putting videos up of her where Joe's like cheering at Sandoval's concerts and they're circling her and being like, this is crackhead Joe. And so people <laughs> coming for crackhead Joe all year. And now poor Tom, well, not poor Tom, but Tom's like, okay, let's, let's put Joe on TV so people understand she's not a crackhead. And they're still like, stupid crackhead Joe's here. <laughs> So then uh, Sandoval uh, comes over and he's like, hey, dude, how's it going? Like, what are you doing? Just like, giving him a little tramaroo. Just giving him just a little tramaroo, right? <laughs> Love that shirt, Tom. Want a haircut? <laughs> uh, take it. We're going to Olive Garden later. Mm, yeah, man. I'm living yeah, man. Stinks. <laughs> <laughs> She's snorting a breadstick. So. Um, <laughs> she's, she's melting a breadstick in a spoon. So, uh, he goes, well, those are your pubes on the ground, dude. And she goes, No, it's just hair. I'm just too lazy to pick it up. So, I'm just gonna sweep it over here. Let's just sit down. I'm just gonna leave that pile of hair there. <laughs> How are you, <laughs> handsome? What's been going on with you? I was like, Are we really gonna have a whole scene with the hair just in the pile of it? Like, can't yeah. anyone pick up that hair right now? No, that's what you kind of girl, that that's what kind of girl Joe is. I love it. Joe's like, Fuck it, there's a pile <laughs> of hair there. Uh, so um Schwartz like, oh, so I had a great conversation with Lisa. Uh so she booked a sick ass cabin, man. And like um Katie and Ariana aren't gonna be there, but like James and Brock and Lala and Sheen are gonna be there. Like everyone cool is gonna be there. Sorry, not you, Joe. Uh, but I think it's gonna be like a really good neutral ground for like some one-on-ones, Tom. Yeah, um, okay, just um breaking in to say here this is a huge tactical mistake on katie and ariana's part 
huge task. Yeah. Like, I get the why you would draw the lines in the sand, what you would need to do. I think Ariana at this point should have said, if you guys are going to have Sandoval on this show and try and make me shoot with him, I'm not doing this show. Then she should have gone off and done spinoffs or done something else instead of coming back to this show, because this is where the audience is going to start turning, because the whole cast is going to go on this trip. It's going to be probably fun, and they're going to have all these conversations or drama or whatever, and those two aren't going to be part of it, and they're going to start, everyone's going to start seeing them as wait, as uh, anchors that are dragging yeah. down the show. Oh, 100%, that is what's going to happen. I think it's actually the worst tactical thing is for Katie, because I always got the sense that Ariana's on the show, but like, I I always got the sense that if like, they said, sorry, Ariana, we don't need you on the show anymore. She'd be like, okay, fine. And she literally has so much stuff happening now because she's on a pedal, man. That like, it is a tactical mistake for her on this show. But since I don't know if she cares about the show as much, it's like, I think not as big of a deal for her. But I think that for Katie, if Katie is just like, she's on the outs, then what does Katie have? But then again, Katie has often been in that position. So she's sort of used to it. But either way, I'm getting off on a tangent here. The, you are totally correct. This is, we've seen it happen before. This is the way reality TV works. Once you take a moral stand and say, I don't want to be around that person, you then become the outcast. And then you become the one that the audience turns against. Well, you make the other person the victim. And even though, too. even though I hear how stupid it sounds, and I know that the audience is probably like, "What the fuck, bro?" But that's how it is. If there's one person that everybody's mad at or making a stink about, no matter what that person did, they become the victim in the audience's eyes. I mean, we've seen it a million times. And like you said, Ariana is good. Like she's a good actor. She has other things going on. She should have left as America's sweetheart, is what I say, and just been like, "I'm too good for that. I'm not going back." And then she would always remain hero, you know. Um, but yeah. I'm worried. Okay, so they're not going to go. So Sandoval's like, um, oh, yeah. Oh, God. So we get another classic Sandoval. He's like, Schwartz is saying, listen, they. I went to uh, Vanderpump Dogs. I talked to Lisa. Um, but then I went home and booked a sick-ass lake cabin. And I want to invite you. And we need to go. But, you know, can you leave your ego here? You know, why don't you just go with everybody and say, hey, guys, sorry I hurt you. And he goes, oh, yeah, Lala, sorry. I gave you so much content for your podcast. And sorry for all that money on merch you made. And uh, it's so fucked up that they don't see what they did. They showed the whole nation how to treat us. Everyone followed their lead, bro. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, let me tell you something. None of us followed Lala and Sheena's lead. It wasn't like we're saying, oh my God, this affair happened. God, I'm still a Sandoval fan. Wait a second. Sheena's being critical on her podcast. I changed my opinion whatsoever. I'm taking out my pitchfork and coming for Sandoval. No, no, no. <laughs> we did not follow Lala and Gina's lead. We followed like Logic's lead. Yep. And um, then we see clips of Lala and Sheena both talking about what a piece of shit Sandoval is on their own podcasts. And Schwartz is like, uh oh, this isn't going to go well with this attitude. You've, you know, let your guard down a little bit. Come on, you can do it. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Academy is a new scripted podcast that follows Ava Richards, played by HBO's Industries, Myhala Herald, a brilliant scholarship student who has to quickly adapt to her newfound eat or be eaten world. Ava's ambitions take hold and her small town values break in hopes of becoming the first scholarship student to make the list. Bishop Gray's all coveted academic top 10, curated by the headmaster himself. But after realizing she has no chance at the list on her own, she reluctantly accepts an invitation to a secret underground society that pulls the strings on campus life and academic success. If she bends to their will, she'll have everything she's ever dreamed of. But at what cost? Academy takes you into the world of a cutthroat private school where power, money, and sex collide in a game of life and death. Follow Academy on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Academy early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus. From Wondery, this is Black History For Real. I'm Francesca Ramsey. And I'm Conscious Lee. 
What do most <laughs> people think about when they hear the words Black History? Rosa Parks, Reconstruction, MLK, February, Black History Month. Exactly, Mom. exactly. There are so many stories of Black history that we just are not really talking about or thinking about, especially outside of February. And we are about to flip the script on all of that. Because on this show, you're going to hear a little less in August 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And a little bit more. She is a heroine to some. As a fighter for black rights, she is a villain to others. Follow Black History for Real on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Listen everywhere on February 5th, or you can listen early and ad-free on Wondery Plus starting January 29th. Join Wondery Plus on the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. I also love Sandoval complaining that people capitalized off of um, like his misfortune while he is actively capitalizing off of his misfortune. I was like, sir, uh, did you remember you have that lightning bolt uh, on your live shows, like hanging off your necklace? Do you know about the New York Times article? I mean, obviously that happened way later, but he he is the first one who wanted to capitalize off of this. Yeah. So um, they're like, uh, this, you're supposed to be humble. And uh, it's not working, of course. So Schwartz is like, okay, but like, uh, I'll miss the gang. Let's go bond, okay? You know? Oh, and by the way, something cosmically changed with Lala. I don't even know how to articulate it. It's just, she was so self-aware. I've never seen her like that before. The only time I've seen her that self-confident was when she came in with that Range Rover or some other girl's lipstick in the glove compartment. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, I also want to point out Sandoval being so upset at Lala and Sheena capitalizing off this. The whole reason why he was in New Zealand was because he was shooting that show on Fox. And I guarantee the only reason why Sandoval was cast on that show on Fox was because of Scandoval. Because otherwise, he's been on TV for 10 years. He would have been cast in things a lot sooner than now if it was just based off of his captivating personality. <laughs> so... Um... She's, he's like, she's so self-aware. And Joe's like, oh, finally, love you saying that. Love that for, what's her name? Is Sheila? Lala. Yeah. Good for her. She <laughs> like breadsticks. We have, there's going to be plenty where I'm going. I'm, listen, I'm not saying let them walk all over you, but just like let them feel like they're walking all over you a little bit. You know? It's like, yeah, but it's been like that for like five months, man. Yeah, well then, what's five more minutes? Just like... You know, just think about it. Like, think about people, it. People think are, about it. Think about it. Yeah, Thanks, think about Joe. it. Think Thanks, about Joe. it. Yeah, she goes, <laughs> and then Schwartz goes, wah, 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 wah. Can Joe please be a full time cast? I need Joe every. I like Joe. I like Joe too. I need her to be here every minute, and I need to know what happened with the hair, the pile of hair over in the corner. I know. Uh, Joe's just on her own plane, man. Joe's just over there dancing in her own head, like <laughs> yes. Ranger. She's thinking about ways to paint Schwartz's wall so it looks sort of like a Tuscan villa. She's like faux painting. It's like, yeah. I wonder if anybody's ever painted with a sponge before instead of a, instead of a paintbrush. It would be wild. I'm going to do it. Would be weird if I made you Italian menus too when we came in here. So uh, now we go to Sheena's house and there's a doorbell and it's Tori, 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 the babysitter, uh, who's her friend. And so she comes over. So we didn't even point out that Tori is the chick in the previews that makes out with Katie and Tom. She becomes part of the Katie Tom threesome oh, storyline later. I did not season. notice. Well, because you know what? I haven't watched the trailer since then, but wow, what a yeah, twist. we did a trailer trash, and we should have recognized that purple hair. We knew there was something special about her when she came in and said, <gasps> I'm an actor, but I'm mostly into music now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she continues to be special in the scene. So she's over, and you know they're playing with Summer Moon, and Brock's like, hey, Summer Moon. And he puts on like a toy stethoscope. He's like, come here, I need to check your hat. And then Tori has like a fake, like a play needle. And she goes, Summer Moon, did you do your Zempic shots today? <laughs> Brock's like, hey, <laughs> is that a conversation to have in my kid, Tori? <laughs> um, well, tonight I have dinner plans. And as much as I trust Tori, leaving someone alone other with someone other than my mom, it's really hard. So I did call my sister Courtney to help. <laughs> trust issues. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, yeah, so then Summer Summer kisses Mom and Dad goodnight, and then she's like, "Bye, Mommy. See you tomorrow." And she's like, ha, 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 ha. "So now we go to Beach and Brew, a happening place in Marina Del Rey." And Brock and Sheena walk into the restaurant, and she's like, "I love a West Side hang." I said, like, "Yeah, this is your first night out with just a nanny and your sister." <laughs> they have su- they have such West Sider energy about people finally coming to visit them, and James yes. has such non West Sider energy about having to go to the West Side, right? But he can't say anything now because now he lives in the Val, and he just made people come to Burbank. But it's really <laughs> funny all this yes. unspoken energy in the room because Brock's like, "Welcome, what's it like to be on the West Side? Here? Look at that. We keep the doors open out here because sea air comes in." And James is like. <sighs> Good to see ya. Like kind of like stretching, like <laughs> yawning, like he's just been <laughs> in the car for an hour. Everyone's like throwing each other all this like LA distance energy. I mean, James looks like he's Furiosa at the end of Thunder, like Mad Max or something like that. Like he has been driving, <laughs> driving for hours and hours through terrible terrain. And he's finally gotten to Marina Del Rey. And now he has to actually sit, to sit through a dinner. Yeah. So she was like, okay, well, I just had a conversation with Lisa, and she literally had Lisa tears, and she was like, after my brother passed, like, um, she saw similarities with Sandoval, and, like, she just wants us to go, like, kind of easier than we have been on Sandoval. How does everybody feel about that? Um, yeah, I totally understand that. I mean, I understand that more than this strange self-serve tap situation in this restaurant. How did that even work? Did anyone see that? That was crazy. <laughs> I love that. They have like little wristbands that they scan into the computer and then it like it's like bloop and then they can it unlocks the tap so they can pick their own. I know, so high tech. Yeah. So James really is like is. Well, you know what, tomorrow I'm gonna go see Lisa tomorrow. She says she wants to talk for ten minutes or something like that. And so we see a flashback of Lisa calling and he's like, I'm not in trouble. She's like, I need you just for ten minutes, ten minutes, James, please, I beg of you. Not just me, Donut wants you to please come see me it's like oh not that awkward one the tail end of the cloning is it god <laughs> let that let, let that branch fall to the ground lisa no more clones from that branch please poor dog well, looks like an ewok that's been stepped on by a gargoyle <laughs> well it's just gonna be like the same thing and like i just don't want him to i just don't want sandoval to do something and then it'll be like too late and then like none of us were even there and brock's like well it's not fair that that got put on you like it puts you against the wall like sort of like a flat screen tv that you're always timing me to put up there so what are you gonna do say something someone's mental health isn't okay i mean we're humans after all yeah, well, that's why I'm nervous to go to Tahoe. I was like, am I just nervous because I'm a Libra? Or am I just nervous because of this energy? Because, like, you know, I'm gonna, like, gonna hear him, and then he's gonna tell me things, and then I'm gonna, like, fall for it and be like, okay, I like you now. And they all reassure each other that they're all humans, and this is what humans do. They feel bad for people. So she's like, yeah, I never people had People in a- L.A. trying to convince each other they're human. I love it. <laughs> oh, After human. they just, yeah, yeah, we're human. Just because we had a robot give us drinks doesn't mean that we're not human, right? <laughs> you, we've been vile for ten years in a row, running on television. <laughs> we're human still, right? Only humans can make those things scan through a computer, right? <laughs> Is it weird that my entire body sets off metal detectors? <laughs> I'm human, right? Could a human? Could a robot eat a tater tot? <laughs> can you not? Wait a minute. Turns out, <laughs> turns out Band of Umbrules is a Philip K. Dick novel all along. Wait, we're all robots? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they've made robots that can age. <laughs> robots Alex can Baskin be masters, found too. robot trick. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, Ali's like, I'm just preparing for the awkwardness. Like, listen, you know what? The hotel's down the street if we need to get one in Tahoe. So James is like, well, I'm not stressed about it. I'm like, he's Schwartz's friend and we'll hang. And if he meshes, if that meshes at one point, then like whatever. So James is already like laying the groundwork of like, if I become friends with Sandoval again, don't be mad at me. Yeah, well, we can all have empathy for someone who's fucked their whole life up. I mean, the problem is things can get pretty dark pretty quick. I do live with James under airplanes. <laughs> things literally get dark quickly, like when a shadow of a 
Airbus 321 goes over your house, it's like midnight all of a sudden out of nowhere. It can also get light really quickly. Do you know what it's like? (laughs) It's like we live in a state of perpetual eclipses. You know what else we get quickly? To the airport. This is handy. (laughs) And Costco. (laughs) And Ikea. (laughs) And now we go go to Vanderpump. (laughs) Dogs, darling! And we've got a new intern, Summer. I'm expecting a lot from you, Summer. Okay? Yeah, she's a Um, VIP. Or VP, or something like that. Where's Dr. John Sessa, by the way? Fiad! I don't know. I'm assuming gone. Was he still there after that whole Kyle debacle? Maybe the world of academia called him back. (laughs) <laughs> okay so um james is like hello hello she's like oh darling hello what's going on have a seat i need to talk to you about something very serious so he thinks this is gonna be like lisa saying be nice to sandoval right so she goes so you know you're you're worried about graham aren't you your dog graham cracker your sweet little dog graham and he's like yeah And then down the stairs comes Graham out of nowhere. Graham Cracker. Sweet little Graham Cracker comes down the stairs and he goes running up to James and she goes, James, he, like you at one time, had been rescued by me. So uh, Graham Cracker comes running up and James says, This little dog was found in a box and there was a woman who looked very much like Raquel's mother standing over the box with a saw and she started to (laughs) saw through the box and someone called me and said lisa a woman is sawing through one of your dogs on the box we've just scanned it as we do every dog we find on the street and i ran down there and by the time i flew down i passed your house did you hear me saying hello i'm on my way to the (laughs) airport (laughs) got on the airplane which no one would thought would fly until i said presto change and it flew and we went to a magical mystical land called arizona <laughs> i found the dog but it was already sawed in two one half of the dog was in phoenix the other half of the dog was in scottsdale Far be it for me to ever interrupt any magic show, but luckily I knew the tricks of magic, and it turned out the half of the dog that was in Scottsdale was nothing but an empty box, because it was magic after all. So I said, Chris Angel, hand me that dog. Mm. And he said, sure, and he threw his hand down, and there was a poof of smoke, and he had disappeared, because after all, magic. And in my arms, the sweetest, most adorable golden doodle named Graham Cracker. Lisa, I can't believe you did that for me. Wow. So Raquel's, I guess the story was. What's up with this? This yeah. sucks. So I guess the story, and um, how are we ever going to know without Raquel doing podcasts every day <laughs> or whatever? <laughs> this Go-go-go. is how I feel on, on Wednesday, February 21st about Scandaval. They tricked me. None of this was my choice. I thought I was running for mayor, but it turns out I was sleeping with my friend's boyfriend. <laughs> um, it turns out, so Raquel, obviously the parents had to take, she didn't want James to have the dog because she said James made the dog a biter because he would like, I guess, play with the dog. You know, when you play with dogs, you're not supposed yeah. to let them bite you because they will keep biting you. And it's not as cute when they're not a puppy, okay? They have big, strong yeah. jaws. And that she he, she would scare him, like, coming onto the couch. She would push her off the couch or scare her while she was sleeping or scare him while he was sleeping, whatever. So, anyway, she didn't want James to have the dog. So, she gave the dog to the mom. And then the mom, the dog was biting the mom, I guess. Mm. And so, the mom got rid of the dog. You can't get rid of the dog. Call the dad of the dog. What the I know. Fuck? That's what was, that? that was what was wild to me. I was like, why was this dog in a foster home when the dog has another owner like that just didn't ma- it made no sense like okay so you didn't want the dog to be with james because he felt like that was bad for the dog so then you just like shove the dog off to lucy lucy apple juice i i don't know that was i was shocked i was really shocked about this um but then there was also a part of me that was like or was it that raquel just brought the dog back to lisa and lisa's like don't worry i i'll 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 say what really happened. And then Lisa just concocts a story that makes Vanderpump dogs seem very heroic. But either way. <laughs> international. 
Either way, this was shocking. I, I don't think that Lisa made up the story. And um, no, yeah, I, I think that they. I think the dog was really in a shelter. What the fuck? That was Who does shocking? That? And very yeah. fortunate that they were able to. They, I guess the shelter, or I don't know they how they know. It. They scanned the chip, and they so saw your dogs that, now. Yeah, dogs now get chipped when they're little right. babies, they, and so when people when shelters find the dogs, they automatically scan their neck for these. And things. when they scanned it in, what came up was the New York Times cover story. They're like, "Scandaval! This is a Scandaval dog. We're calling Lisa Vanderpump." They're like, "Wait a minute." There's this is a handsome actor knows this dog. <laughs> Wait a second. We scan it in and there's a link and I'm following the link and it's to an MP3 that goes Ain't nobody loving me like I loving you, like I love you. It's DJ James Kennedy's song. Uh, gotcha, you're subscribed to my Spotify. <laughs> Wait a second. The, we scan this in and it says Pumptini. Wow, I think this is James's dog. <laughs> um, so this is really cute. A man reunited with his dog. So yeah. she's like, yes, they dropped him at the shelter and they asked if we would take him. And he's like, I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling confused. I'm feeling a little bit of tinnitus, but that's mostly from the planes. <laughs> I have a little bit of a bruise on my head where an ice cube fell off that southwest wing. <laughs> um... I will say, I mean, I, I've said it a million times how James is such a fascinating person to watch because he can be so vile, but then he has this really tender side, which is, I think, why we always come back to him. And he's always been actually very, very attached to animals. He really, like, he really cares about Graham, and he's, like, crying here. He's also, by the way, very sweet to his cat, Mr. Banks. He's very affectionate towards animals. And it just, it, it's like, it's really lovely to see. And he's really crying. And he's saying like that Graham is his best friend. He's like, it's literally been a dream come true. And he's back with me. And I don't know, it's possible I really don't. I wasn't expecting this. I thought I was going to have to talk about stupid bucket on Sandoval. But I got Graham Cracker instead. Thank you. Well, I just want you to look down at Graham and think, could I ever stop being friends with you? And then put Sandoval's <laughs> face on this little golden toodle and imagine what you would say to Tom Sandoval right now. Would you tell him to get off the couch? No, <laughs> no. All of a sudden, Joe appears. I I'll walk your dog for Olive Garden. Just tell me, <laughs> tell me. Tell me what you want. Anytime, any day, any time. 2 a.m., 1 p.m., I don't care. Breadsticks, bitches. <laughs> I want the, the breadsticks. I need it. I need it so bad. And that brings us to the end of Vanderpump Dreams. Oh, it's actually a very sweet and lovely ending. I, I don't know. I honestly, Roddy, I, I actually really am. Enjoy I'm enjoying the season. What can I say? I enjoy it. It's like what I said before. Nothing's happening. And I thought I'd be really upset with that. But I, I do think that all the conversations are about like real shit going on in their lives, which I feel like for me is has sort of like a baseline compelling quality to it. But I understand if other people are like boring. But for me, it's it's not. It's not. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I don't feel the need to make any declarations today. You know, I'm just I'm just going along with it. It's on. I'm enjoying watching it. You know, part of me just has trepidation, and part of me is just annoyed that they're trying to sound of all shit because we knew yeah. they would try it a little bit. You know, like if you're going to have a show, you're not going to fire Sandoval because he's the center of Scandoval. And the right. show at its core is about shitty men. It's like a Southern Charm show. Shitty men are what makes this show run it's always been mm -hmm. that way and so we knew that he was going to be back and they were going to have to try and rehab him in some way but to see him make literally zero effort like he's doing the opposite of rehab and they're still trying to shove it down our throats so we all need to be nice to tom and then using this like self-harm stuff is just tasteless to me it's tasteless at this mm. point so um it's pissing me off but you know i love feeling rage and so i am feeling that and um, so at the end of the day, I chalk it up to a win. What can I say? You know, I'm angry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? It's a great time to be alive. It sure <laughs> is.
<laughs> it really is. It is a good time to be alive. And you know what's going to be even better? When we're in Europe. So go get your tickets for our European tour in May. <laughs> and if you're just going to be in La La Land, that's good too. Come see us in LA at the Netflix yeah. is a Joke Comedy Festival in May. You can also get this as a video and all our bonus episodes. We are doing Southern Hospitality this week as our bonus episode. Oh, can It's a little wait. late, but that's another Bravo classic. So but if you guys Ronnie, are into that, find some Ronnie, recaps over on the Patreon. Ronnie, do you know why our Southern Hospitality recap is late? Why? Because you're really fucked up, Ronnie. You're really, you're really fucked, fucked up, up. Joe. You're fucked up, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be doing that. And um, Monday nights are our crappy hour night. That is our Instagram live show uh, where we talk to you guys at 530 Pacific on Instagram. We sure love you guys. We will talk to you next time. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kerr. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch or Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.